Hi folks, Del Warren, Kegel Training Center. Uh, welcome, thanks for spending some time with us today. And with me, I've got many time national champion, Team USA, uh, and the current um, most valuable player in college bowling, Tom Hankey Jr. So today we're gonna really talk about something important. I know there's so many bowlers out there that wanna get back and as the world starts to reopen, we can't wait to get back into the bowling center. And I wanna to touch on some key points that I think will help you uh, with getting back into the swing of things safely and get your training um, and, and get your scores back up as quickly as possible. So the first thing is, um, unless you've been doing this at home, it's very, very, very important that you start with a dynamic warm-up. Now, we've heard this phrase before. I know that for some of you that follow some of the uh, most competitive college teams, you see them. Uh, warming up. That's called a dynamic warm up. So I'm not an exercise physiologist, but what I would suggest to you um, is to do some research on Google and uh, uh, look up dynamic warm up or check out Heather at Bullfit uh, uh, and, and talk to her because she can walk you through that. But the point of the matter is that we want to get the body ready to do something it hasn't done in a long time. And it's so important that you warm up. Our dynamic warm up at Weber is about 11 and a half minutes long. Um, and it's more so for coordination and injury prevention. And I think the fact that we've all been kind of cooped up and haven't been doing a lot, um, I think this is the very, very first step. The second thing you're gonna notice, and we've got two of Tom's balls here, is the fact that your bowling ball is probably not going to fit, especially if you're an avid bowler. So Tom, why don't you show them um, the one that doesn't fit. And you can see here that he can put his fingers all the way down into the holes. And th that's his fingers, and his thumb is probably about this big. Um, and then secondly, he's got another ball here that's a little bit older that has some smaller grips in it. So this fits him nice where his fingers only go to the first joint, and it's the proper size. So you really want to pay attention to this. Um, and generally speaking, uh, bowlers tend to be a little bit, well, that's close enough. And uh, they just squeeze a little bit harder. But remember, we haven't been bowling in a long time. So we've got a lot of tape here. You could tape the back of your thumb. I like green because it's thicker, and it creates more drag. Um, and then, of course, you, you may have to use some one-inch tape instead of three-quarters. Um, if you have switch grips or its, um, you can certainly go with your smallest thumb, but make sure that you give an effort to try to get that ball to feel right. If you have access to finger grips in the short term, I would at least change one or two of your bowling balls to a smaller grip. Take the time to do that um, if you do have access to that. All right, this is going to be really important because if you don't, you're going to start squeezing and grabbing, um, and that could cause some really bad habits. Um, as you get back into your game. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is we're getting ready to get on the lanes. And what I would do is I would go a step back from actually just starting with drills with bowling balls in your hand. What I would do is I'd, I'd pick a couple of basic drills and just do them with no bowling ball. Okay, because we wanna be very, very careful here and we don't wanna be in a hurry. So the first thing Tom's gonna to demonstrate is our first drill, which is our foul line drill, but he's gonna really think about each one of the pieces that he's doing. And he's actually gonna line up his left foot on 15, which puts him in line with the second arrow. And he's really gonna watch that hand in those movements to make sure he's doing it correctly. Because remember, we haven't bowled in six weeks or more, okay? And then from there, Instead of throwing a full shot, he's going to throw a full shot without a bowling ball. You know, so if you do five or ten of each one of those, I think that, again, that adds to your warm-up, and it, um, it helps you get coordinated and helps you start to get the feel of what you haven't done in quite some time. Okay? Okay, so now we're ready to add some weight. And what Tom is gonna do is demonstrate our swing and slide drill, which I think is probably our most effective drill. But he's using the Eileen's Bowling Buddy Swing Trainer uh, to do this. And so right now, because we haven't had any rhythm or tempo, it's gonna be very easy with a grip that doesn't quite feel right is to pull down from the top. And we, won't, we don't really wanna go there. So this tool gives us immediate feedback. So Tom?
Okay, and all he's trying to do is to make sure that that swing strainer, trainer stays attached and he's getting the correct feel of the weight transfer, definitely not pulling down from the top. Okay, and then from there he's going to go to a back to a full approach. And if he does pull down from the top, again, this thing is going to flop back and give him instant feedback. Very nice. All right, so again, we're working on our correct rhythm and correct feel before we put a bowling ball in our hand. So now that he's done that, now he can start with drills with bowling balls. He can go through his five sets of drills um, that he does with bowling balls. Um, so most of you, um, drills have been around now for several years. We've been teaching them. A lot of people have implemented that. They're so very, very, very important, not only to your warm up, but also to the development of the different parts of the physical game. So then he will apply that with a bowling ball. Okay, so after you've used the swing trainer or something like it, um, so that you kind of get the rhythm of weight transfer and not pulling down, the next little uh, kind of a, a neat little simple drill that you can do is called the hum drill. And so as you start to throw shots, um, the, if you start to pull down and you get anxious, uh, if you start to hum during that shot and you go, hmm, if you pull down, you'll hear the hmm, and I think we've all felt that before. Um, so if you do the hum drill and try to keep the hum the same hmm, the whole time, again, that's going to give you feedback so that everything, the, the, the sound should stay the same from the time you start it all the way to the bottom of the swing. So. Um, that's going to help coordinate your swing and your timing and your rhythm. And it's going to give, again, learning is all about feedback. So this is called the hum drill. Uh, we use it a lot in postseason uh, at Weber. We use it a lot as uh, some of our students get ready um, uh, for some important competitions like junior gold or high school state tournaments, things like that. Um, uh, as they prepare for normal competition, uh, when things uh, were like they used to be. But in this case, what we're looking for is the correct rhythm and getting a sense of not pulling down. And if you don't get feedback in that area, you really can't feel yourself do that. So hope this helps. It's a, it's a nice little drill that everybody can do. And, you know, you can do it really anywhere. And you don't really need, uh, you know, any tools or anything uh, specific. Um, everybody can do it. And so finally, um, I know all of you are going to be anxious to bowl. And the tendency is going to be, especially for the youth, is to come in here and bowl a bunch of games. Man, that's, that could be disastrous. Um, and we know that, especially younger players, uh, we may think that they can't uh, generate injuries, but we, we know that's not true. Bowling, um, if it's done incorrectly, we know that can, uh, you can have knee, low back, shoulder, wrist, uh, and the list goes on and on. So as my chiropractor, my best friend, told me, as I started to wor work out after several months of not doing it, he said, Dell, the first two weeks, I really want you to feel no stiffness, to work out in a way to where you feel no soreness. And I think that's the best advice he's ever given me. So what I would say is I, would, I wouldn't practice any more than 30 to 45 minutes max, and that includes your warm up. Ease back into this. Make sure you're doing some of this stuff uh, correctly. Um, and it, correctness and being careful, I think, is really uh, the best way to get you kicked off correctly um, and to get you on the right path very, very quickly. So um, I hope some of this stuff helps. Um, I know that we're all anxious to get back here. I'm glad I'm back here right now working uh, as we kind of ease back into this ourselves at, at KTC. Looking forward to seeing all of you and looking forward to seeing you on the lanes with some healthy competition. Good luck.